Hello and welcome to Thursday, this Passion Week, as we uh, meet together with Spring Hill Baptist Church family and friends and study the events of the Passion Week. And uh, I would like to uh, just, if we could for a minute, just pray and then we will uh, begin our study. Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time that we have during this Passion Week. And Father, during the things that are going on in our world that we just set aside to come and to worship you. And Father, to pray together and to hear your word. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us this morning by your word, Father. And I pray that each one of us would hear your sweet voice and know your comfort. Now, Lord, help us to hear, to understand, and help us to grow in our knowledge of you and in your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I want to today uh, share with you from Matthew chapter 26, and I want to talk about the events at the Last Supper. Now, on Thursday during the Passion Week, I've got too much going on here. Thursday during the Passion Week, there were many events that took place. On that day, there was the Last Supper. There was Jesus telling Peter that, that he would deny him that very night. There was the events of the Garden of Gethsemane, the prayer that Jesus prayed there. You'll recall that as they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he took Peter and James and John and they went a little further and he told them to wait there and pray, watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. And then he went a little further and he prayed and he said, uh, Father, you know, if we can, this cup can pass from me, let it be, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Also that night was the betrayal and the arrest of Jesus. Judas brought those that had been assigned to him and they arrested Jesus. The disciples deserting Jesus as he had prophesied they would. And then there were a few other events that happened also that night. But today in our study, I want to focus on the the Last Supper. I want to focus on the Lord's Supper that Jesus shared with his disciples and which for us was the institution of the, the Lord's Supper that we, we share with each other. And I want to share with you some thoughts on the Lord's Supper. And then after we talk about that for a few minutes, I want to ask you something that you have probably never thought about or even heard in relation to the Lord's Supper. So stick around for a few minutes and, and we will get to that. Our text will be in Matthew chapter 26. And I want to begin reading in verse 20, and I'll be reading from the NIV. And the Bible says, When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him and to one another, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. And Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives." In our text, there are two or three things that are very important to me that the Lord brings out or points out during the this Last Supper here. And first of all, as they begin the evening, Jesus begins to teach them what's going to happen to him. He tells them in some other passages in John and in Luke, he tells them exactly what's going to happen to him, that he's going to be betrayed, that he's going to be handed over into the hands of sinners, meaning the Gentiles, the Romans, and that he's going to be crucified. He tells them this exactly. And he just makes them understand that this night that they are, are sharing together is a solemn, sacred night. 
not only because they are sharing the Passover, they are, are participating in the Passover feast, but because of what is about to happen to him. And then Jesus shares the bread and the cup with them. And to me, this is one of the, the, the most awesome things that Jesus does as he gives us this in remembrance of what is about to happen to him. And that's the word he uses, and that's important because there are a lot of teachings out there on communion and, and on the supper and what it is and what it means and, and all that. But folks, Jesus himself said, when you do this, just do it in remembrance. That's all it is. It, it, it's, it's, it's an institution. It's a sacrament that we do in the church to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. He gave them the bread, first of all, and he said, take this and eat, for it is my body. He's not, I, I've heard all kinds of teachings, and folks, all it is is a remembrance to us that he was beaten for our sin. The Bible says, by his wounds we were healed. The crown of thorns that was put on his head, that it reminds us of what he went through because of our sin. And then he took the cup and he gave them the cup and he said, take this and drink for this is the blood of the new covenant. This represents my blood. And when we drink that cup, we think about the blood that was poured out, that was shed, the Bible says, for our sins. And we need to be in remembrance of of those things. Romans 6 23 says the wages of sin is death. And that's what Jesus did for us. And when we partake of the Lord's Supper, when we share in that together, we are remembering what Jesus did for us. And then when you think about the cup and the bread, we need to remember that Jesus took all of God's wrath and judgment for our sin upon himself on the cross. And he took that so that we could be free from the burden of sin and that we could have forgiveness and everlasting life and receive the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Now, when we sit down to the table, that's a serious time. That's a holy time, a sacred time, and we need to remember these things that Jesus has done for us as he told us. Every time that we do this, which we're going to do it this Sunday, we're going to share together over, over the internet, through the live stream, the Lord's Supper this Sunday on Easter Sunday, we need to remember these things, the price that Jesus paid. We need to remember that because he took our sin we can now be free. We need to remember that there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because Jesus took all of the wrath and the judgment that God had for our sin. And now we are free. We are born again. We are saved by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then we need to remember, Jesus tells them that the next time that he eats this supper with them, it will be in the kingdom. We need to remember that. That's just as important as the rest of it because that is our hope as children of God. That is our anticipation. That's what gives us strength to live out this life in this world is that we know that this world is not all. And we know that there is a future and that one of these days we're going to sit down with Jesus in the kingdom of heaven, in his kingdom, where he will rule and reign. And we're going to enjoy that feast and then we will spend all eternity with him. Remember those things. So, when we sit down to the Lord's table, when we enjoy the fellowship of the Lord's Supper, it should be an extremely sacred time for us. It should be a holy time. When we set aside everything, there's nothing in our hearts and in our minds but, but what Jesus has done for us and remembering the price that he paid and looking forward to being with him for all eternity in his kingdom. And so when I think about that and I reflect upon that and I read these passages, I see the grace, the glory, and the love of Jesus Christ for me. Now, let me ask you the question. 
This is this this is the question that I wanted to ask that you probably never thought about or heard taught on in relation to the Lord's Supper. When this holy, sacred meal was going on, what were the disciples doing? What does the Bible teach us that the disciples were doing or thinking while this Last Supper was taking place? Well, I pulled together from several places in, in the story some things that the disciples were doing. I printed it out because I want to read some uh, quite a few verses to you, and it would be quicker this way. So let me give you a couple of things that the disciples were doing while Jesus was sharing the Last Supper with them. Well, Number one, Judas was allowing Satan to just have a field day in his heart and mind. As a matter of fact, Judas was just giving himself over to Satan. This is while the Lord's Supper's going on now. In John chapter 13 and verse 2, John says the evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Now think about that. Of all the places in the world that you would think that something like this would happen where Satan would actually be involved in somebody's thought processes in mind, it wouldn't be at the Lord's Supper, especially with the Lord Jesus there. But that's exactly what Judas was doing. He was allowing Satan to have free reign in his heart and in his mind. Number two, the other disciples, what were they doing during this Lord's Supper? When Jesus was, was doing this Lord's Supper, what were the other disciples doing? Well, the Bible tells us in the book of Luke, in chapter 22, that they were arguing about which one of them is the greatest. Now think about that, people. The Lord's Supper, Jesus is telling them that he is about to be betrayed and handed over to sinners and crucified. And he is explaining to them his body is to be beaten and broken and his blood is to be shed for their sin. And they are arguing over which one of them is the greatest. Luke chapter 22. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who was going to betray me is with mine on the table. So the son of man will go as it has been declared, but woe to that man who betrays him. Verse 23, they begin to question among themselves, which of them it might be who would do this. Verse 24, a dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Now, how are you going to get from the Lord's Supper to an argument about who's going to be the greatest? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us how it happened, but, but if you will permit me, let me give you what I think happened. Jesus, as the text in, in Luke told us, he, he, he said he told them that he was going to be betrayed and the one that would betray him was at the table with them. And so in another passage, Luke told John, Luke told John, to, or Peter told John to ask Jesus who it was. And so John did, and Jesus said, it's the one that reaches into the bowl with me. And so John looks over there and, and, and tells Peter, well, he didn't say who it was, but he said if, if they do this, and Peter would say something like this, you, you know who Peter is, how Peter was. Peter would say something like this, well, I know it's not me because I'm Peter. I, I'm the rock. I'm the greatest. And John would look over and say, well, hey, hey, I'm the one that, that, I'm the one that he loves. You know it's not going to be me. And Peter said, well, it ain't me. Well, one of the others was hearing this go on and, and he probably got in and said, well, you know, it's not me because, and you see how it just, it just went from here to there. And they begin to argue when they should have been focusing on the sacrifice that Jesus was about to give, when they should have been preparing themselves for the events of the night and the next couple of days that was to come. What were they doing? They were arguing. And folks, this tells me that even when we are in the most sacred of times, if we are not careful, Satan 
can play with our heart, our emotions, and our thoughts and get us to go places that we would never dream of going. But because we aren't focused on what's important, it gives Satan the end track. We're going to see that in just a minute. And then the third thing, what were the disciples doing while Jesus was instituting the Lord's Supper? Peter was denying that he would deny Jesus. In Matthew chapter 26, then Jesus told them, this very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. So what were they doing? Peter was denying what Jesus was telling him. Jesus said, Peter, tonight you're going to deny me. Peter said, not me, Lord. In another place, he said, Lord, I'll die with you. If all fall away, if everybody runs off, I'll go to prison and I'll die with you. And the Lord said, Peter, tonight you will deny me. Does this sound like a service in your church? Does this sound like maybe a, a fellowship meal that you have at your church? All these different kinds of things are going on. And I wonder when we take the Lord's Supper, what are you thinking about? During the Lord's Supper, as have already been pointed out, Jesus tells us that we are to do these things in remembrance of him. So in our minds, during the participation of the Lord's Supper, we should be focused on what Jesus has done for us on the cross and what Jesus is doing for us in heaven. Because he said the next time that he shares this will be in his kingdom. What are we thinking about? Well, let me give you a couple of verses here that I just want to share with you to help you think about these things and and control your mind. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Verses three through six, he says, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. He said, the weapons that we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Now, what are those strongholds? He tells us in verse five, he says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought. Wait a minute. Every thought. And we bring it in obedience to Jesus Christ. Every thought. Paul says the way that we fight this battle in this life is up here. And if you, Paul is telling us, if you can't control your thoughts, Satan will. If you can't bring their arguments, every pretension, and then he just narrows it right on down, thoughts. When you come to the Lord's Supper, when you come to church, and you're just sitting there with with the praising of God going on through the song service and through the prayers and then through the preaching of the word, if you can't control your thoughts, Satan will. When you come to a sacred time like the Lord's Supper, if you can't control your thoughts, Satan will. Just look at the disciples. There they were with Christ himself in their presence. And look what they were doing and thinking. And then the second thing I want to share with you is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. And Peter tells us this, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith 
resist him standing firm in the faith. Uh, two things, real quick. He tells us to be alert and to be sober-minded. Control the way you think. And the reason we have to do that is because the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion. And watch this, looking for someone to devour. That means he can't just come up and devour anybody he wants to. That means he has to find somebody that he can devour. And according to this text, be alert and be sober-minded. According to Paul in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 that we just read, the ones that Satan can devour are the ones that can't control their thoughts. And that's what happened to the disciples at the Lord's Supper that night. And that's what happens to you and me every day of our lives. If we don't control our thoughts, Satan will. Now, Sunday, we're going to participate in the Lord's Supper during the live stream, and I invite each and every one of you to be with us. Uh, be prepared Sunday when you uh, come to the live stream and have your cup and your bread. And as I said yesterday, I feel certain, given the circumstances and conditions, the Lord will forgive us for not having uh, unleavened bread and, and maybe uh, some kind of uh, grape juice or something. Just use whatever you have available, even if it's just water and a piece of light bread or a saltine cracker. That'll be fine. Just use it. But when you come to that service, be prepared. Control your thoughts. Prepare your thought processes for the service. Anytime that you come into God, all the time, 24 hours a day, if you are not controlling your thought processes, Satan will. And that's what we learn today from the Lord's Supper. One of the most sacred times that Jesus ever spent with his disciples and they couldn't even stay focused on what Jesus was teaching them. Father, help us, Lord. Oh, God, help us to control our thoughts. Lord, help us to think only those things, as Paul tells us in Philippians 4, that are good, that are lovely, that are righteous. Help us, Lord, to think on those things. Help us to keep our minds set on things which are above and not those that are below. Lord, help us to remember what you have done for us in Jesus Christ and to think on that. Father, I pray now that you'd be with us as we go through the rest of this week. And yes, Lord, even the rest of this time that this virus controls our country like it is, and we stay shut down and locked in under the conditions that we are. And Lord, just give us your grace and give us your strength. And Father, help us to be a light in a dark world. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, um, I'll be live again uh, tomorrow, Friday and Saturday, and we will be discussing the events of the um, Passion Week that happened on those two days. And then Sunday will be live at 11 o'clock Sunday morning. And that will be our Easter service and our sharing of the Lord's Supper. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and, and being a part of this. And pray for me. I, I keep forgetting. To, me and Charlene, pray for us. as we, When we're here like everybody else is at home and we're not getting out and going, and we miss our grandkids. We miss our friends. I miss Spring Hill Baptist Church. I miss being with all y'all and, and singing and praising and praying and sharing and our fellowships. And I miss it. So pray for each other and hold strong in Jesus Christ. God bless you and see you tomorrow.